Hope you guys enjoyed that little improvisation at the beginning there. My name is Jack Gardner and welcome to Free Lesson on Friday, number 47 or 48, something along those lines. Guys, before we go into the teaching part, I just want to say please do make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click that little bell for notifications. I make free lesson content every Friday. Also release my own music, gear demos, things of that nature. So yeah, without further ado, let's go into the teaching part then. Okay, so triads, I think, are one of the most important tools we can use across all forms of music, and it's one that really we should know as guitarists, but often I find with pupils, this is something that they are actually not so familiar with. Now, today, I just want to talk about a few different ways that you can approach this. Now, I think it's fundamentally important that you learn these across the fretboard in inversions. So if we were to take something super basic, like C major, I'm pretty sure most people will understand that, that we have root, third, and fifth. And I'm pretty sure then that you will understand that you can build that in different areas of the fretboard. All of these kind of shapes. Now, the important thing to learn is the inversions then. So forgive me if you already know this and this is super simple. We'll get into more interesting things in a minute. But if you don't, an inversion is essentially when we take that series of intervals, the root, the third and the fifth, and we change the order. So essentially, the, if, if we were to take this first in, uh, root inversion of C major, that's root, third, and fifth. We are now gonna move it so the third is the lowest note in terms of pitch, and then it's gonna follow this sequence so we get three, five, one, so. And that is first inversion of C major. We can invert that again, so we could take this note up to the next note, which would be the fifth, and we get this. So we've got five, one, three. Now, if we were to invert that one more time, we'd essentially get the same as the beginning. We'd have root, third, and fifth. It's just an octave above. So this should be kind of straightforward, and it's one thing that I suggest people learn, but if you don't know how to kind of practice this, this is one way that really helped me. So, bearing in mind that there's basically root inversion, first inversion, second inversion, and then we go to the, the octave, why not build an arpeggio out of it? So, you could do this just on one string set here. We are just using the A, D, and G string, and we could get this. Now, that's just one string set. I think there are many others. We could do this with the low E string. We could go... tight up there but <laughs> you get the idea don't just limit it to one it's really really important as guitarists that we start to think this way as well as across this is the issue that i think a lot of players have we are so used to box shapes that it's very easy for us to to forget that really in terms of melody and things like that we can only go up and down that is much easier to do when we view the fretboard this way, horizontally. Another way you could practice it, though, is to think of it as smaller triads going this way. So you could say, say with C major there, you could start, actually the lowest one available to us would be with the fifth in the bass, so second inversion. So you could try something like this. <laughs> That's another way to do it. So we had, ah, uh, sorry. And also this way. Now, obviously this is just one um, triad type. That's just a major triad. And we've only looked at it on one string set. So what I would suggest you do is go and apply this to as many different triad types as you can and across different string sets. Now, if this is something that you're interested in going in more detail with, then actually my JTC package, Bridge and the Gap, I think it's called, um, covers loads of these ideas in 
great detail really and explains how you can start linking them. The improvisation I used at the beginning was essentially just major triads. I think I was in the key of E and I was just using E major and A major, maybe a B major at some points, and then C sharp minor, all I was using. So in terms of chord numbers, just the typical one, four, five, and six. So yeah, they can be really powerful, in my opinion anyway, and it's a great tool for me to, to really outline chord changes, especially if I'm alone. I love to use them. Guys, I hope you found that helpful. If there are any questions, please let me know down in the comments. What is it you guys want to see in the next lesson? As always, I love to take suggestions from you. Most of these free lessons on a Friday have actually come from the comment sections. So yeah, it would be of great assistance to me if you can give me some ideas of what it is you want me to cover. Guys, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, click that little bell for notifications. My name's Jack Gardner. Until next time, cheers.